Welcome to another episode of Familiar Faces. It's summertime. Disclaimer, may not actually be summertime. Do not use this video as a basis for your schedule. For a more accurate date, please consult a current calendar or a trusted relative or associate. Familiar Faces, Channel Awesome, and all its affiliates do not take responsibility for you being a total dumbass. Although, if you're in the same age group as me, it's sad to think about how every summer, a little more of our childhood is eroded by time and the responsibilities of adulthood. You have... 937 messages. Can you guys just remember when you didn't have to do anything but play video games, watch TV, and read comic books all day? Oh yeah, score. Well anyway, one staple of my summertime childhood was a little frozen treat that sported a character that would leave a very strange lifelong impression on me, and I'm guessing others as well. That's right, it's Little Orphan Orange, one of the mascots for Otter Pops. That's right, Otter Pops. Those long tubes of juice that come in that striped box. You put them in the freezer and by the time you take them out, they're so hard you can beat a polar bear's brains in. If you try to eat them then, you chip a tooth or freeze your esophagus. So you either let them sit out for a little while and they melt back into syrup and attract ants, or you could do what I did and suck the juice right out of the ice. Man, these things were awesome. We loved them so much we didn't even care if they turned our tongues into bloody sandpaper and we couldn't taste anything for a week. They were like little IV bags full of summertime fun. Just took it to my veins! They were so successful that in 1996 their rival company, Flavor Ice, bought the rights and recipe to Otter Pops. And that company still makes them. They're often imitated but never reproduced. And other companies are actually making frozen versions of their product's flavors. Yeah, because every time I have a warhead, I always think, this needs to be a freeze pop. Their choice in mascots was also distinctive. Going past a few obvious, even cliche choices like penguins or polar bears, they settled on a small marine mammal. You've got different characters for all the different flavors. There's Louis Blue Raspberry, Strawberry Short Kook, Sir Isaac Lime, Poncho Punch, my favorite flavor. I love Mexicans. Alexander the Grape, and of course, Little Orphan Orange herself, which is naturally a takeoff of Little Orphan Annie. And by the way, if you think I'm the only one that still cares about these crappy little tubes of sugar water, think again. These things have been around since the 70s. They're a classic installation in American culture. In fact, in 1995, the company planned on retiring the Sir Isaac Lime flavor. And there was a huge signature gathering campaign. And it wasn't just kids. Soon adults were signing the petition. Most notable, a Stanford professor that coined the phrase otter side. Suffice it to say, the company kept the Sir Isaac Lime flavor. But we're not here to talk about him. No, let us direct our attention back to the little misfit of the group. Little Orphan Orange is one of the oddities that plagued my childhood. I mean, just look at her. She looks so sad. It's very, very jarring looking down at your colorful summertime treat and seeing these woefully lost eyes staring back at you, as if to say, Well, glad you're enjoying our ice pops. What's that? Your parents bought them for you? <sighs> yeah, I, I didn't have those. Oh well, don't let my problems stop you from having your fun. Just throw me in that dumpster when you're done. Story of my life. Literally. And of course they made sure to keep her off the front of that box. <laughs> Make sure you keep that depressing little girl tucked away. Oh, and that Mexican too. We don't want to draw any unnecessary attention from Arizona. Plus, we don't want the adults thinking that our product will give their kids Montezuma's revenge. It will, but we don't want to advertise that. Nowadays, they've tried to salvage this a bit. They've removed the otter mascots from the individual flavors, but you can still see their mug shots on the tubes if you look hard enough. Along with that, the company has set up a website to promote the product. It's definitely directed towards the kiddies, and it was set up back in 2003, which practically makes it Stonehenge in internet years. But, interestingly enough, there are biographies about each of the characters. And Orange's bio couldn't have been more conflicting with what I pictured as a child. Listen to this. Little grew up in an orphanage in the backwaters of Lake Erie. Literally. She learned the importance of self-reliance and a positive attitude when facing life's hardships. 
we're, we're, we're talking about that one. That one right there. The one that looks like she'd be better suited as one of the flavors of children's chewable Prozac. Little's big break came when her outstanding voice and plucky street smart spirit made her the winner of the Otter Pop Stars nationwide talent search. Yeah, apparently the Otter Pops are a rock band. Well, name one group from the 1970s that wasn't. And yeah, Little Orange is the singer of the band. What kills me is the line, outstanding voice and plucky street smart spirit. Now I've got eight mile songs in my head being sung by the Chipettes. Although from the weird way she's got her leg around that mic stand, it looks like she might be pulling a Miley Cyrus. Why, they even have a music video. Wake up in the morning feeling like P. Diddy. Hey, what up, girl? Grab my glasses, I'm out the door, I'm gonna hit this city. Just kidding, it's more like this. With its bland melody, cliche lyrics, and poor animation, I should probably not like this. But as it stands, it reminds me of those cheesy cartoon bands from the 70s, like Chattanooga Cats. And there's nothing like early internet flash animation. Looks like something that should be on Newgrounds.com. Wait a minute. And with the cliche song, you perform cliche activities. Like jumping on trampolines, going to the beach, riding on top of a van, and of course skydiving, which is a mandate for all groups that parallel the visible spectrum. Oh, and by the way, Orange has a dog and its name is Melancholy. <laughs> I, I found that cute. And you know, as good as it is seeing Orange happy, I can't get over how weird it is that they decided to attack on this little appendix of information on a little out of the way website after decades of depicting her as miserable. But here's an even kookier little notion. How about not having a sad little ward of the state as your mascot in the first place? How the hell did this get past everyone so long ago? Someone's incompetent cousin must have been in charge of marketing and he just now retired at the turn of the millennium. Either that or they chose the worst marketing company ever. How come our cereal isn't selling? It's got everything kids like. Marshmallow, honey clusters, fruit and chocolate flakes. Hmm. Well, maybe it's because you went with Drooling Morons Advertising Company and now your mascot is a bedridden grandma with venereal diseases. With venereal diseases? Yes, that's how nasty that grandma is. Well, how do you know she has venereal diseases? You have it on the box, you morons! But honestly, you know why I think it's okay to have a very sad character as your mascot? And a few of you are gonna know where I'm going here. She's the kind of character you would find in a 1980s animated children's movie. Something like a Don Bluth's work. Even though this unnamed sub-archetype character has been around longer than that. It's usually a very young person that life has given an unprovoked running start kick to the face. But it's okay, because you know that there's going to be a happy ending. And you look back at all those low points with a strange enjoyment, in the terms of storytelling. And maybe that's how you're supposed to relate to Orange. Or maybe she's just shy. These are the kind of things you think about on those lazy summer days as a kid. Or when you're really high as an adult. For me, I just like obscure characters. And here's to a good one. Little Orphan Orange. The sad little icebreaker from your ice maker. By the way, there is a discontinued flavor from the 1970s, Rip Van Lemon. I can't even find a picture of this thing, but if you have a tube of this stuff, get it to Brad, pronto. Forget new coke. If I have my way, he'll need a new liver. 